So I, you know, I work nowadays as a, as a creature supervisor and concept artist. Um, but my whole, I guess, career has always been balancing between the kind of fine art side of things and the digital side of things. So I had my degree from Bournemouth University and then worked at Cinesite for, for a minute and then went off to Florence to do um, drawing and, and sculpture there. And then one way or another, worked my way back around to DNEC. And then that was, so, well, at DNEC I started teaching anatomy. That was the first time that I was actually teaching it. And that's kind of going back eight years or something. And since then I, I carried on teaching it through the CG Masters Academy. And now I have my, my own studio in, in Barcelona where, <clears throat> where I do the work there. And then I teach, um, I teach at the Fine Art Academy there, the Barcelona Academy of Art. So it's kind of, I've always been just kind of balancing these, these two things all, well, I guess more accurately looking to see where they, where they connect and specifically looking at these things through the lens of, of anatomy teaching in terms of like, well, what is, what is the connection point between what we're doing and what a fine artist is doing, a fine artist would be doing? Or to think about it another way, just to strip everything back to its basics would be like, why should we study anatomy? Uh, that, that's seeming like probably a, quite an obvious question, but um, I would be interested to get some answers from you guys to see what your take on it would be. So the actual question is, why, why study anatomy? It's not, it's, not, it's not a trick question. It's not like, ah, the actual reason is this. It's just like, it's a thing worth thinking about because I think it's, it's something that we take as read that we should do it. But as I'm going to talk about, I think there are times when it's actually more destructive to do that than it would be to not do it. So, so why do it? It's like some sort of reference map, uh, some kind of compass that I use personally. So, you know, you don't have to start from scratch every time, you know, more or less where um, something is. So you can orientate yourself in the, in the piece. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. One of the reasons I love asking this question is because there isn't a, a clear answer. You know, so, like some people have just said, well, I, I've got a body and I'd like to know about it. That's a, you know, that's a good enough reason. Uh, but the, the idea of it being a map is an interesting thing because it kind of, it, it brings to mind the idea that like it gives you a reference point, right? So you're not completely lost, but it also points to the way, the way in which it can be destructive because a map is what, like nowadays you would say a map is, is going to be pretty, we're pretty sure that that's accurate. It's going to have pretty, pretty clearly defined boundaries. And so what happens when you want to play with that reference point, like we might do if we're working with a quadruped instead of a human, or like we might do if we're working with a creature that's been invented from the ground up. So, um, so, so then that kind of takes me to my, to my next question, maybe a different way of looking at it, which is, um, as artists, we are, as figurative artists, let's say, we're expected to study anatomy or we expect that of ourselves. Um, a doctor would also be expected to study anatomy, uh, presumably to a, to a high level, you would hope. Um, so then the question is, is like, should we, is that study the same? Or is there any difference in the way that we should approach it to how a doctor would approach it? It's a form of a function, isn't it? If you're a, or a wife's a physiotherapist, so... She, she looks at the muscles in a very, very different way because she doesn't care how to shape them necessarily. Mm. But she needs to know what they call and when you do certain things, what you're trying to do. If you hurt yourself, what right. you're likely to have done. Right, and that's so for, for me, like looking at, at the way physiotherapists approach anatomy is actually super useful because, um, like, you think anatomy schools, oh, sorry, art, art schools have not existed for that long. The vast majority of art history, it's just been people figuring stuff out. So the academic method only came about <coughs> relatively recently. And, and in that, as part of that schooling, anatomy became a thing that was learned and it became a set of rules that people follow. Um, so we learn like this shape or that shape or this proportion or that proportion or whatever it is. And it's very, it's very rare, I think, that you would see uh, within traditional academic um, anatomy instruction something like function, So as basic as that. Right, just like like a, a physiotherapist. I, I was telling the other group actually. I used to I used to to, to box a little bit, and uh, and I'd get a, a massage the week before I did that. And there was a masseuse once told me like, well, whenever you're boxing, you're getting punched in the left hand side of your face quite a lot because all the muscles down the right were really tense because every time my head would whip back, they'd tense to try and hold it. And I was like, you know, I was already teaching anatomy at that point, but I was like, that's fascinating that you're so that you're so in tune with, because it's true, like I would have this lazy left hand and I'd be getting smashed all over the place, specifically on that side, right? And, and this, this masseuse could, could tell that. And I think that way of thinking about things is super relevant to what we're doing in visual effects. And, and actually, 
it's like we are, I think, privileged because in a way we're forced to, or we should be forced to, be approaching anatomy in a, in a functional way. Whereas if you're studying at a, at a traditional school of painting or sculpture, you, you, that door might not be open to you. You just copy the model and, and, uh, and you think that that's enough. But my, my answer to that question, <coughs> just so you know where I stand on it, you don't have to agree or disagree, but in what way should we study it that's different to, uh, to a doctor is, and this will be pretentious probably, but I'll loop it back to hopefully something that's relevant. Um, so a doctor or a physiotherapist would be concerned with the finite. Right? Like the more that they know, the more uh, ability they have to be able to heal you if you're unwell or whatever. So the process of the ongoing process of science, of medicine, of whatever, is one of the accumulation of knowledge. If you're like, let's say a figurative art, let's say you're a fine artist, then, and so you're working with the figure, the figure would typically for a fine artist, I would say, be a conduit to something more profound. Right, so, so you, like, which we could call the infinite, right, something, uh, Mm, something that says something about the process of, of being alive. So we are looking for the infinite through the finite. It's, it's kind of completely opposing goals. And what that means in terms of how we approach the study of it is we, we don't want to approach it from that doctor point of view of like adding more and more information, which is certainly the mistake I made. Certainly the mistake I made like uh, starting teaching anatomy. You know, I think Dean still use those, those anatomy videos for training, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it, you know, because it's like, what I'm doing there is I'm trying to show my knowledge as a teacher. So it's like, ah, you didn't know this little detail, and you didn't know that little detail. And so I'm, I'm kind of just adding more and more information onto what everyone's got. But you think ultimately, what is, what is it that we're working with when we work in entertainment? It's like, um, what, storytelling, basically, or design. You could look at it, it's the same, it's the same idea. And you, the process of good design or the process of good storytelling is uh, boiling a thing down to its bare essence. And an example would be like a little poem. Like if there's one word out of place there, it throws the whole thing off. Everything is stripped back that doesn't contribute to the end result. And, and so the, the process becomes a reductive process rather than an additive process. And I think like that is the, the key thing that I've got in mind when I'm working with anatomy because, uh, because having taught it for so many years, like I, I think I was, I was often able to construct classes that people might enjoy and, and feel like they were getting something out of. Um, but the knowledge would just vanish immediately. So, like, more and more, I'm, like, abandoning teaching specifics, you know, because that information you can get quite easily. What does the pectoralis major do, and how does it operate the body, that kind of thing, and instead focusing on concepts. And I think that is just as relevant for if you're a fine artist to, uh, to if you're doing what we're doing. And, and in our line of work, I think those concepts will be relevant for whether it's modeling or, or CFX or radiant shot sculpting, whatever it is. I think, I think they carry through. So. That's, that's my objective with what we're talking about here today. That's why, uh, that's why I called the workshop an anatomy tool set workshop. That's kind of it, like, if you can get anything out of it, just some, some way of thinking about it, right? Like, any specifics, and we will go over specifics, and you're more than welcome to ask as we, as we go through and build the body and things like that. But, uh, but hopefully the things that will stick will be maybe a way of thinking about it. Uh,